that that indoctrination started very early mm-hmm. in the curriculum system, almost from the very start. Yeah. And continued. Well, how did you learn to speak English? Oh, when I was uh, studying in South Korea, when I was in university, I watched American TV show Friends for 30 times from season one to 10. And <laughs> <laughs> that taught me English eventually. That's amazing. Huh? <laughs> I thought you must have learned as a child because you speak it quite well. Oh, thank yeah. you. Very well. Now, uh, I understand that uh, there's a lot of starvation that goes on in North Korea. Is that true? Yeah. So uh, I was born in 1993 in the northern part of North Korea. And regime divided people into 51 different classes. So even though North Korea began in the promise of complete fair uh, equalness, that nobody's richer, nobody's poorer, uh, but they divided the same homogeneous people into 51 different classes. And based on that status, the regime decides who gets fed and who does not get fed. Oh dear. And only the top elite gets fed, and the remaining 90% of populations, like long hunger games, they are starved on purpose because the regime using a hunger as a power to control us. That if we are malnourished and if we are starving, we really have no energy to complain or thinking about the meaning of life. And do that, people actually die? Do people die of starvation? So, yeah, uh, I mean, seeing dead bodies every day, seeing on the streets. And even my uncle died from starvation. My grandmother died from starvation. And when I was a child, more than 3 million North Koreans passed away from starvation. And even right now, um, 2023, North Koreans are having even cannibalism. They are that desperately starving. Uh-huh. Now, if somebody, let's say you knew a family in in North Korea and you wanted to send them a big box of food, would it get to them? It can't because uh, North Korea is a, the whole country is at a concentration camp. They don't have internet. They don't even know what's the internet. You cannot write a mail. You cannot write a letter. Uh, North Koreans cannot make international phone calls. It's a hermit kingdom. It's the most isolated nation in the entire universe, I think, right now. So wow. there's no way that we can reach North Koreans right now. And is, is, has there ever been an attempt by the people to rise up, and maybe a coup, and, and change things? Or is it that they just don't, don't know that there's better things in other places? So North Korea is a very different case than even Cuba or Iran. The nation, the people were so oppressed to the point they don't even know, have the vocabulary to describe. There is no word for oppression in North Korea. And I usually say, you know, if you don't know, if you know you're oppressed, you're not really oppressed. North Koreans, they don't know they're enslaved. And how do you fight to be free if you don't know you're a slave? So mm. rising up is not even a concept for these people because they are that much brainwashed and isolated. Yeah. Now, there, your, your father was sent to a prison camp or a detention camp. Are, are there a lot of those? And, and how do you wind up getting into them? And how do you wind up getting out of them? So North Korea has three types of prison camps. One is a concentration camp. Second is a prison camp or detention camp that my father sent. And then third one is a re-education camp. The concentration camps are like the Auschwitz during the Nazi Germany. They have gas chambers. They do human experiments. They know people often do not last more than three months if you go to concentration camp, and it's a life sentence. Uh, the crimes you commit to go there is very <laughs> unthinkable crimes like Somebody one day looked at a newspaper and every phone newspaper has to have a pic- pictures of dictators. And you didn't get C and you saw the back of the paper and you ripped it by mistake. That gets you sent to concentration camp along mm. with three generations of your family. You know, oh. yeah, or like watching Hollywood movie or reading a Bible is an execution and that kills, takes 
three generations or up to eight generations of your family to get punished along with you if you ever like read the wow. Bible or become a Christian. I didn't realize it was that bad. That's horrible. Yeah. My goodness. And how do you get how how do you get out of like your father, he eventually got out of the camp. Do they just like have a, a time you're supposed to serve a certain length of time and so the reason my father got arrested and sent to ten, I mean, prison camp in the first place was he was engaging in the black market. And when he says black market, it's not like you're selling drugs or selling weapons in North Korea. In North Korea, free market is not allowed. There's no such a thing called like trading. And you have to rely on government's public ration to survive, but they don't give you the ration. So only option for people is dying either starvation or try to trade, like selling your old used blanket, you know, sell a rice. And that's what he did. He was selling some dried fish, some clocks, and later mm -hmm. some metals. And that's what got him to send to prison camp and sentenced him more than 10 years. And eventually serving several years in the camp, he was uh, like tried to bribe the guards and he got out. And thankfully, this was not a concentration camp. He could get out for six days, and there's well, no way out for the concentration camp. Well, I suspect that uh, for the Korean government, the fact that you're out here telling people about what's going on, they don't like you very much, do they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been on the killing list of Kim Jong Un for quite some many years of my life, and um, but you know, yeah. there's, <laughs> that's a risk. Well, it, it seems to me, just from listening to you and from other things that I've heard, that one of the major functions of the government is to suppress information, uh, to keep people from actually knowing what's going on. And uh, have you noticed some of that going on in this country now? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, that's why I wrote my new book, and also I am... I am terrified. I have a child that I gave birth in America. He's American. And his first breath was taking this freedom. And after going to university in America and witnessing the BLM protests and living through the pandemic in America, I'm becoming disillusioned every day that is this really the land of the free and home of the brave, that I've been getting canceled. I've been getting denounced for being a racist or being a Nazi and uh, people telling me that I don't understand what oppression is, what systemic racism is. Yes. And it's, it's madness what's happening in this country right now. And you've probably noticed that it has accelerated tremendously over the last couple of years. You know, things can happen so quickly. You know, I think about places like Venezuela, which used to be free, open society. They used to have wonderful times in Venezuela. And look what happened in a relatively short period of time. If you take your eye off the ball and you stop, at, like Ronald Reagan said, protecting your freedom, it's going to be gone. And uh, because it's almost human nature, you give people power. And if you don't check that power, they want more and more of it, and they want to control not only their lives, but they want to control your life, and they want to control everything. And uh, and that was the reason that our founders worked so hard to give us a constitution that would actually protect the freedoms that people have. But uh, as Benjamin Franklin said when he was asked after they completed the constitution, what do we have here, sir, a monarchy or a republic? He said a republic, if you can <laughs> if you can keep and that requires a lot of energy and you've been a person who's been an example of that kind of energy and I want to thank you for that <laughs>